This is video number 76 in our series on tensor calculus. In this video, we're going to explore the very basic geometric nature of the curvature of a line in space. Back in video number 8, if you can remember back that far, we discovered this very basic relationship. We discovered that if we take the uh, derivative of our position vector with respect to the arc length, what we get is a unit vector s hat that is always tangent to the curve at the point of evaluation. All right, well, today we're going to play off of this relationship and go a little bit deeper. In particular, what we want to do today is to ask this question. What does it mean to take the second derivative of our position vector with respect to the arc length? So uh, here we know what the first derivative is, but what does it mean if we apply the second derivative? Well, uh, this, of course, since we know this relationship gives us this uh, unit vector, then this is equivalent to the simple derivative of our unit vector with respect to the arc length. So what we're looking for here is the rate of change of our unit vector s hat with respect to the arc length. Now, we know that the uh, value, this, this s hat, vector is a unit vector. That means it's always a length of 1. It's a vector that does not change in its length. Therefore, the only thing that can change is its direction. Therefore, at first glance, it's very obvious that this relationship here has got to be some measure of the rate of change of the direction of our unit vector. So as this uh, unit tangent vector here moves along the curve, it points in different directions. So it turns left and right in order to stay tangent to the curve. So this is going to be a measure of how quickly that uh, change of direction takes place as it moves along the curve. So let's do this next. So uh, let's look at this expression, s hat dotted with itself. And we know that's equal to 1. And now let's take the uh, derivative of both sides of this expression with respect to s. Of course, here we'll have to use the product rule. So ds hat with respect to s dotted with s hat plus s hat dotted with the derivative of s hat with respect to s. And on the right-hand side, of course, we're going to get 0. All right, now the dot product is commutative. Therefore, these two terms you see here are exactly equivalent. We just swap the order. They're, they're exactly the same. Therefore, each of these expressions has got to be equal to 0. And that tells us right away that the derivative, this ds hat with respect to s, dotted with s hat being 0, tells us that these two vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular to each other. In other words, this expression we're looking for right here has got to be at right angles to the unit vector itself. It's got to point either to the right or left at right angles. So with um, that, let's just pencil in what we might expect on our little uh, diagram up here. So here we've got the uh, unit vector here pointing this direction. But if we move along the curve to a point like this, then our tangent vector is going to kind of point in this direction. Remember, it's got to be tangent to the curve here. And then we get up in a location like this. That tangent vector is going to stick out in this direction like this. Okay, now uh, you can see that um, just visually that moving from this location to this one, our, our unit vector had to swing to the left a little bit. So while it's this, uh, we're on this curve spot right here, this vector we're looking at here has to be something that kind of points off like this. Remember, it has to be perpendicular to our unit vector itself, and it's got to be to the left because it's swinging to the left here. Then we get up into this area, then the, the, the uh, vector is not turning very much. So the, uh, the vector may actually be 0 or something very, very small. But then when we get up into this area, we're turning pretty sharply to the right. So here, our vector has got to point down here. And because the curve is a much sharper curve, then the magnitude of this vector is much greater than it was down here. So imagine, if you will, that we're sweeping along our point here. And as this vector sweeps right or left, 
we see this uh, second derivative is going to pop up either to the left or right and get larger or smaller depending on how sharply the curve is taking place. Now it is uh, convenient and uh, customary to represent uh, this vector in this little form right here. We represent it as a scalar value that we normally represent with the value of kappa, Greek letter kappa, times a unit vector, normally with the letter p, which uh, points in the direction of this vector. And uh, we call these elements, first of all, uh, the letter kappa here is known as the curvature. And the unit vector that we just defined here, this p hat, is known as the principal normal. So the principal normal is a unit vector that points in the direction that I've drawn in here. It's always a length of 1. It's simply this uh, derivative that's been normalized. We take this and divide by its own magnitude, and we'll get a unit vector, p hat. And that'll point either to the right or left, depending on which way the, the curve is going. And then we have this scalar factor of kappa, which is known as the curvature. So the curvature is a scalar value that is the magnitude of the vector that points to the right or left of our curve. OK, let me add a couple of final comments before we move on. The first is this, that this principal normal, which uh, is the unit vector pointing in this direction or this one, uh, only makes sense if the line is actually curving. If we reach a point where the line is absolutely straight, then uh, it's impossible to know whether to put this normal right or left because there's no curve going on. So we say that this principal normal is undefined in a straight section of our, our arc here. So we say then that this principal normal is piecewise continuous. It is continuous in areas where the line is actually curving, but uh, once the line straightens out, it's undefined, and then it's defined again when the curve starts to, to actually bend again. Second thing is this, that uh, our arc, of course, here I've drawn it in a plane, but a curve through space is not limited to a plane. It could actually curve into or out of the page. And as such, this principal normal will also point in various directions. It always points uh, in a direction that is in the plane of the curvature itself. In fact, the principal normal combined with our uh, tangent vector s hat will define the plane in which the curvature is taking place. So um, this, this direction does not always point in uh, on, on a plane. It, it varies in and out. But it is always a unique direction. And that unique direction, coupled with our unit vector, defines the plane of the curvature. All right, let's move on now and look at a special case example. What we want to do now is to look at the case where our curve is simply a circle. So this is our curve right here. Now, because of the symmetry of a circle, it's very obvious that the rate of change of the direction of our unit tangent vector is going to be constant. It's going to be the same at all points along the curve. So let's see if we can look at it geometrically and determine what the value of that curvature is. Now to do that, we're going to evaluate um, an expression for both the numerator and the denominator of this expression right over here. So we're going to form uh, this ratio geometrically to determine the curvature. So we're going to look uh, for the change in the vector itself. How does this vector change? And uh, compare that with the length of the arc change that occurs at the same time. So to do that, here's what we do we would uh, advance our point here to some point out like this. And that would give us uh, an angle like this. And I'm drawing this in uh, much uh, over scale here. Uh, we really want to treat this little change in the angle as an infinitesimal change. So this is going to be an angle change of d theta. It's just a small change in the angle. But I'm drawing it much larger so it's easier to see geometrically. OK, now when we do that, of course, our point changes and the position of our unit vector has to change too. So when we've moved the angle, then our, our unit vector is going to move down to a place like, let's say, right here. 
Okay, so to find the numerator of this expression, we need to find out what the change is between this vector and this one. So we'll do this. We'll transport a copy of this vector and root it at the same place we have it right here. So we'll just make a little copy here. And the change of the vector then is this guy right here. The, the distance between these tips is the ds hat value. It's the change of the vector from uh, resulting from moving the point from here to here. Well, um, geometrically, it's easy to see that this angle right here is also d theta. So what is the distance, the magnitude of our, our vector change here? Well, we find the magnitude of an arc by multiplying the radius of the arc times the change in the angle. Well, this is a unit vector, so the radius is 1. Therefore, the change in the distance from here to here is just d theta. Now, it's also very obvious that the um, principal normal points toward the center of the circle, like this. It's here in this direction, here, there. So this change of the vector itself, then, it's going to be represented as d theta times p hat, p hat being the principal normal. So this little change right here, which is just d theta, and it's d theta because the arc length is 1. There's no, no multiplier here. All right, now at the same time, we've moved the point along the arc. So this is our ds value here. It's the change in the arc length. Now, how long is this? Well, again, we find an arc length by multiplying the radius by the change of the angle. Well, this time the radius is a. So the arc length, this distance right here, is a times d theta. So the denominator is going to be a d theta. And of course, the uh, Values of d theta cancel out here, and that gives us a result that looks like this. We'd have a magnitude of 1 over a times our principal normal, which is, a, of course, a unit vector. Now, the curvature is the magnitude of this vector, so that means that the curvature of a circle, this uh, kappa figure here, for a circle is equal to this uh, scalar factor out here, 1 over a, simply means that the curvature of a circle is equal to the reciprocal of its radius. And that leads us to yet another definition. We say that this value of a is known as the radius of curvature. Now, the radius of curvature is more than just uh, an answer to this simple problem. It gives us an alternative way of expressing the curvature. Uh, for a more general case where we've got a, a variable curve, then the value of kappa here is going to vary from point to point depending on the curvature. Well, each one of those uh, variable values of kappa is associated with a variable value of the radius of curvature. So what we have is just an alternate way of expressing the same concept. It's two different ways of really saying the same thing, except that these two parameters are uh, reciprocals of each other. So expressing the uh, value for the curvature can equally well be expressed as a value of the radius of curvature. Okay, um, with that we've reached a pretty good stopping point. But before I end the video, I want to give you a short uh, demo. Hopefully it will allow you to clearly visualize the concepts that we've introduced here. Here we've got a spiral, and I have uh, displayed the... Um, position vector right here, and you know that uh, with a position vector, if we change the value of s, that position vector will sweep out the curve. Uh, it is the position vector as a vector-valued function that sweeps out and defines our spiral. Okay, well, you also know that uh, we have our unit tangent vector. This is s hat. It is a unit vector that is always tangent to the curve. So as I change the value of s, you'll see that uh, unit tangent vector sweep along the curve in a tangent fashion. 
Well, what we've introduced today is the principal normal, and that's a vector that's going to point inward like this. Our spiral is curving to the left, so our principal normal here, this is p hat, is pointing basically toward the, the axis of the spiral because our curvature is always moving to the left. And these two are going to be orthogonal to each other at every point. So as we again sweep out the uh, position vector, you'll see that they move in tandem around the curve. Okay, we also said that those uh, two vectors together will define a plane. So let me define that for you. You'll see this plane. And I'll go right down to the edge of it here, and you can see that the plane is perfectly in line with these two vectors. It's these two vectors that define this plane that uh, the curvature is occurring in. All right, um, then we said that uh, this uh, point will be associated with a numerical value of curvature and also a numerical value of the uh, radius of curvature. So to uh, illustrate that, let me display a circle here. This circle in magenta is the circle that's associated with the curvature at this point. Here's the center of the circle, and uh, the rate at which our curve is curving right here would be associated with a circle of this size. Now, the size of this circle will change as we move along here because the, the curvature is actually changing. So let me also display the numerical values up here. At this point on the curve, the curvature value is here, and the radius of curvature is uh, equal to this value. So um, let me take this all the way back to the beginning of the spiral here. And you can see at the beginning, our circle is very small because the radius of curvature is small and because the curvature value is uh, large relatively. And what happens is, is that we move along the spiral, the curvature is going to decrease because the, the spirals are getting larger and larger, and the radius of our circle is going to get larger because it's the inverse of this. So let me just put this in motion, and you can see as our position vector moves along the spiral, you can see that the value of the curvature is decreasing and the value of the radius of curvature is increasing. Our circle is getting bigger, and the rate at which the curvature occurs is getting smaller because the, the sweeping arc here is getting larger and larger. And at the same time, the plane that's defined is also moving up the spiral and staying in line with the uh, two vectors that define it. So hopefully that will give you a pretty good uh, visual understanding the concepts that we've introduced in this video. Now I'm sure you recognize that throughout the video we did not make any reference to a coordinate system. Everything we've done here is done strictly with uh, the reference to geometric objects. Well in the next video we're going to continue our analysis but in doing so we're going to illustrate how to employ the use of a coordinate system.